always for the time. Hey, coach. Thanks as always for the time. I appreciate it. No uh, thanks. Talk a little bit, if you don't mind, about the match against Mexico yesterday and how that's going to affect both sides in this case. Thanks. Um, I don't think it's ideal to have a game midweek before um, before a game, but I, I don't say that nationally. I think uh, national team, sorry, I just mean in general, when we play three games in a week, it affects the physical ability of your team. Um, I think the luxury for both teams is it's only one player that played the majority of minutes. I know our second Dallas player came on the pitch, but for you know a, a short period of time. Um, I think what we both got going for us is both players, you know, James Sands and Jesus Ferreira, are incredibly professional players. So their recovery and the way that they, you know, that what they're doing today and tomorrow will be, you know, everything they can do. So um it was a good game. I enjoyed the game. I watched it, stayed up and watched it. Thought James played well. Um, so you know, we'll plan as normal. James is available to play. He's in good spirits. I think he's pleased that he played well in the game and you know we'll prepare as normal. Andrew. Hi, coach. Um, the primary transfer window closes on Monday. Um, you've talked about how your guys' recruitment is like ongoing and sort of like not necessarily like beholden to that date, but like do you expect any movement before the window closes Monday, in or out? And if there isn't a player that comes in, will there be sort of any disappointment that you guys didn't add now in this specific period or not? Um, well, I think, you know, it is ongoing, but when you get to the place where it's, you know, three, four days away, the day is important because if we want to bring in a player, we have to do it in the next four days. Um, but uh, there'll be no disappointment. I'm really pleased with the group that we have. You know, we will continue to try and bring in the right players in the positions that, you know, you can see where we need depth or where you can see where we can potentially make the team stronger. Um, we're working at it. We will be working at it on Tuesday. If we don't do it by Monday, it'll be no different. We're not working any harder than we were. We're not working, you know, I think in our league, it's really apparent that you have to recruit the right players for your squad. And if you bring the wrong player, whether it be, you know, a player that doesn't get in your first 11 that you've brought in to be in your first 11 or a player that isn't the right guy for the culture that you have in the group or isn't the right position for what you need, then it has a huge impact. So we will continue to communicate together, me, David, Brad, the coaches, to see whether we can recruit players to make this group stronger. But like I say, you know, I'm incredibly happy with where the group is at. You can see in the performances that the team is improving and growing. And, um, you know, I, like all the fans, want the best players to make our team the best team for New York City. And if we can do that today, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, we'll, of course, do that. If the right player comes along in the secondary transfer window, we'll do that. And, you know, like I say, the whole focus is on making the team the best team that we can be, whether it's on the training pitch or in the recruitment. Ronnie. Hey coach. Hope you're having a good week. Just wanted to ask, I know one of your previous press conferences, you mentioned that this team still has one more level to go in regards to quality and chemistry. Would you say we saw a little bit of that and I guess the game in Nashville and just looking forward to FC Dallas this upcoming weekend. Thank you. Yeah, I think I was really pleased with the, those parts of the game, you know, the game, the parts of the game where, you know, what we're working on and the team that we want to be, we see that in, we probably saw that in more moments and in longer periods in the game. And, you know, that is really pleasing from for me and my staff because it reinforces the work that we see ourselves doing 16 hours a day in the in the coaching room we're here working hard, trying to find ways, trying to organize and prepare this team so that we can be a better team every week because ultimately performance is what will give us results. Um, and I also think for the players, you know, it's it's been good to review over the last six games, seven games where we feel the performance was improving. Um, and especially this week, the players are seeing that it's paying back. You know, the hard work is paying back in those moments, but, you know, the per the performance wasn't perfect. So we're not getting carried away. We know that we still have huge areas to improve in. Um, but once again, you know, the team has worked incredibly hard this week to make sure that they prepare themselves to put a performance in at home again. 
we're going to go in the room. Roberto? Hi, Coach. Um, Richard Ledesma, for all accounts, had a pretty good game uh, on Saturday. Can you talk about the way he played, what you saw out of him, and, and making himself a case for uh, starting all the time now? Um, yeah, I think the performance is exactly what we need from players when, you know, when we introduce players into the team. We do that because we feel they're going to make the team better. And his tactical awareness is really high. You see in the game, he gives us real structure and opportunity to play the style of football in the game that we want to play. Um, his technical ability is real high level. His receiving skills are, um, you know, that of that type of player. You know, you see he, he reminds me a lot of Santi and those types of players that we have that we want to play in between the lines to carry the game offensively for us. Um, needs to work on on this physical side of his game, but that's normal. It's natural. You know, when you don't play a lot of football and then you come into our league, which is really high intense, really physical. But I thought he coped well with it and he gave us 60, 70 minutes of real high level play. And now it's about sustaining. It's about consistency for him. Um, for sure, he is staking a claim to play every week. If he plays like that, he makes our team better. Back to the Zoom, Scott. Hey, Coach, one more here in this case. Uh, right now at City Field, your club is 3-0-2, and after today, you still have four more matches uh, in Queens this season, as it stands right now. Talk a little bit about what the difference has been between having City Field as a second choice versus in the old days when it was RBA. Thanks. Yeah, I think we we you know we feel at home in Queens, just like we do in the Bronx. Um, you know, we 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 love that New York feel, the, the atmosphere, the the connection we get with our fans, the, the the real you know energy that we get when we get those offensive moments. You know, we felt it in the Miami playoff game. We felt it in this game, and you know we had that real run last year across April, May, where we had a lot of games at City Field that, you know, we just get that real energy and the magic there. And like I say, to me, it's that New York feel. And final one, Michael and Greg. Nick, I uh, just wanted to go back to the U.S. Uh, game because you mentioned uh, James Sands being there. Uh, talk to us about Rob Vartusian uh, and the work he does and, and how um, how that fits. I guess it's – it's I not remember seeing uh, – you know, a coach uh, be on a on a club side and then go away for a couple of games. Um, I think it's just the unique nature of the way that U.S. soccer is structured at the moment, and the challenges that they have around sport and direct their head coach. And um, you know, Anthony Hudson has been put in charge interim, and you know he has to build a staff. And um, Rob has a lot of relationships across the, you know, across. American soccer because of the great work that he's done many years, whether it be with youth, youth national teams, whether it be MLS. And there was an opportunity that arisen. His level is really high level. His, his work is really high level, sorry. Um, whether it be with the goalkeepers, whether it be set plays or whether it be, you know, coaching on the field. He, he does a lot of coaching on the field here with us as an assistant coach. So to me, it's a no brainer for them to want a guy of his level and the opportunity to go, over a four-day period mid-season where, you know, they have a game against Mexico. We have James there. Of course, Rob has previous relationships with Sean and Sean was the goalkeeper. So it fit for both of us. Um, I don't see it being a huge long-term thing just with the nature of the amount of time with Gold Cup and those things. But we'll revisit that if if it's a conversation. Um, the one thing I can say here is he's a huge part of what we do, a huge part of my staff, a huge part of my trust and his work. He plays a huge part in the in the in the level that we can produce with our team and the level that we want to produce in the future. And one more, Christian Henning. Hi, Coach. You alluded to it there before, the the feeling at, at City Field in the Bronx. What's that like for you when it feels like there's almost this synergy between the quality of the play on the field and then what the fans are giving you in the stands? Um, it, it, it's, it's the only way that you win. Of course, there is a huge demand on our performance and we play a, a major part in preparing and putting in a performance that will win football games. But you have to have that connection and that synergy and that real spark between your supporters and your team. And 
we know that we drive that if we if we start well, if we play high intense football, if we play offense an offensive game, if we can build that connection in the early parts of the game, we know our supporters bring incredible support. They are, in my opinion, the best supporters in MLS because you know not only do they support us here in the, in the Bronx and in Queens, but they also support us on the road, and we've seen that. I've seen that personally across 2021 in huge games and then across last season, you know, whether it be Montreal away in the playoffs, Miami at home, those those amazing games. And we know we play a huge part in that. It drives us every day. We I use our supporters and the, and, and the video that our content team collects to demand performance out of our out of our players because they really love it when they have the connection with the fans. And um I say every week, if we can create that, we get that magical moment at the end of the game where we share the win. Um, so when we do have a game in the Bronx or in Queens, we get really excited for that. Great. Thanks, everyone.